Hi, good afternoon, folks. My name is Priyank Desai. With immense pleasure, please allow me to introduce to you all our guest lecturer, Ms. Arushi Sethi. She has completed her bachelorate degree in management studies from HR College. Followed by that, she got her diploma in graphic designing from the London College of Communication. It's a glorious college as it stands second in the world for art and design, according to the 2021 QS World University Rankings. Thereafter, Mama has worked as a line producer and celebrity manager for BBC Studios. She worked on reality shows like KBC, Telep Diklaja, and Indian Idol. Mama has also worked with one of the most prestigious advertising marketing agency, namely Foxy Moron, for over like a tenure of four years. She has worked for some well-known campaigns too, including influencer amplification for Creds IPL 2020 launch campaign and Burger King's Valentine's Day campaign, which featured Seema Taparia. Arushi Ma'am has established her own influencer marketing agency named Poland in 2019, just a couple of years ago. Since its setup, Poland, under the leadership of Arushi Ma'am, has worked with multinational and domestic esteemed brands such as Netflix, Amazon, Gillette, Alt Balaji, Singles, Dior Maybelline. To name a few from the never-ending list of brands. Besides this, she recently got featured in a Social Samosa Superwoman 2021 list and won honors at Agency Reporters. She, uh, the name of the awards was She Awards 2021, 2021. Apart from her excellence in academics and professional life, she has also aced in sports as she acquired the position of national level golfer. So now I'm sure after hearing all this, we are pretty excited to hear from her. So without further ado, I would like to hand over this class to Miss Arushi Ma'am, and we can get started. Yes, hi guys, good morning. Thank you for the introduction, Priyank, uh, and thank you for the warm welcome, Aditi. Um, so uh, today's session is going to be about <clears throat> influencer marketing, and that's the vertical that I head at Zoom Media, guys. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. I am. Going to make this really um, fun. Okay, so Zoom Media. Just a quick introduction into the organization. So we're a network of seven agency brands. We've been around for over thirteen to fourteen years. Foxy Moron, which is our digital marketing agency, is the flagship agency for us. And there are six other agencies, namely Doinoink, which is a consultancy, Polin, which is the influencer marketing agency, Rabbit Hole, which is the production or the video solutions agency, Mammoth, which creates. Uh, long format content uh, and also is uh, our own publishing uh, platform noesis which is our web and technology agency and phosphine which heads creative tech so yes all animals and that's why the name zoo media so let's quickly jump into what is polin so polin actually creates influencer marketing that matters right and what is it that we do well we do what every other influencer marketing agency does we um, associate with celebrities digital celebrities micro regional influencers nano influencers across different platforms across different genres but what is it that we do differently what is it that polin does that no other influencer marketing agency today is doing so we're sitting at the center of brands and creators and what we do is we curate everything that is available in the influencer marketing ecosystem right so we tell brands uh, what is their business objective and then we marry it to ensure that they reach the right audience uh, this is our three step process uh, which is germinate pollinate fruitate and for anybody that thinks i'm going a little fast don't worry um i'm just this is just the gyan the textbook when i'm going to go ahead i'll go much slower but i'm just quickly taking you through what we do um so germinate pollinate fruitate so germinate is the first phase of influencer marketing where we analyze the potential of any brand pollinate is when we actualize the intent right so once we've studied and we've decided what is it that we want to do for a brand we actually bring that to life in the form of content and the third part is fruitate where we analyze the results or the impact of the campaign that we've done what are the key learnings what worked what didn't work what didn't work and then we sort of you know start all over again right so this is the three step process that polin follows okay so let's get to the main part of the presentation which is what is influencer marketing 
is influencer marketing karina kapoor endorsing a pet brand because she has a pet is it virat kohli showing off his latest pair of sneakers and offering to have them on sale at mintra is it garnier announcing their new charcoal face mask and influencers are showing you how to use it is it the latest tide challenge or is it kusha kapila doing a sketch video very honestly all of this it is influencer marketing but i think that influencer marketing is a lot more than that and just because i feel like i'm back in college today i'm going to uh, explain influencer marketing to you in the context of dating in 2021 right so everybody understands what it is and what we do okay so let's take an eligible boy in the market and i can just see avinash gupta's camera on so avinash is the eligible boy that we have in the market and avinash is supposed to be finding the eligible girl in the market and again i have riya matre on camera so riya matre is the girl that avinash gupta needs to find right now which is so avinash is the product and riya is our audience right so how do we get avinash to riya okay so there is the first part of it is we do research right so whenever riya is looking out for a boy whose opinion does she take right so we find out the different options for her opinion so the first one could be harshita her best friend uh the second one could be aditi her mom or her teacher the third one could be priyank her brother right um there could be another best friend um uh, say jandi right so there are four to five different ways in which we could get avinash the eligible boy to reach riya the eligible girl right so the first step is do your research right identify and curate the right set of influencers who are the people that could influence your audience right that's step number 1 step number 2 is what is it or who out of these five have had the best success rate in the past so has riya been influenced by her mother the most uh, has she been influenced by her best friend the most has she been influenced by her brother the most has she been influenced by a dating platform like the last time the last five dates she went on has been on bumble or tinder right so identifying the success rate so you go through the data and you see which one has been most successful so we've identified that best friend number 1 Harshita is the one that has had the best track record. Every time she's recommended a boy to Riya, Riya has gone on a date with that boy, right? So we decide that okay, let's go ahead with Harshita. The next thing that we need to do is what is the content? What is Harshita going to tell Riya about Avinash so that she gets most convinced, right? So what are you going to say about the product? Are you going to say Avinash is the best boy ever? Are you going to say Avinash is better than all the other boys in MET? Are you going to say Avinash is better than your last boyfriend? Are you going to say Avinash fits into the family? Are you going to say Avinash is going to be loved by your mother? Right. So, what is the narrative that you are going to take? So, second most important step after you select the right influencer is selecting the right content that the influencer is going to talk about. Right. And third and most important thing is the timing of it. Right. So, when is it that Avinash is going to be introduced to Riya? Are we going to do it at a coffee shop? Are we going to do it at a nightclub? Are we going to do it in college? Are we going to do it probably when his when she's on her way to work or on her way to college, right? So, who's the right influencer? What is the influencer going to say? And when is the message going to be delivered, right? So that is influencer marketing for you in dating twenty twenty one language. I hope that made it sort of easy for everybody to understand. So if you choose the right person and the right message at the right time, I'm sure that Avinash and Riya will go on a date, right? So getting your brand to the right audience. Has these three steps. Okay, moving on. But what is okay? If it's not dating, let me show you some real life examples of what is influencer marketing in twenty twenty one. Influencer marketing is very honestly, guys, it's just pop culture, right? It is whatever is trending in today's day and age. Whatever is relevant to today's audience is what influencer marketing is, right? So influencer marketing could be meme marketing. right so memes today are very very popular i'm sure everybody on this call has seen the cred ad the rahul dravid ad as most people i'm assuming you guys are all mass media students so most of you would have seen this ad right but i'm going to quickly just uh, show you the ad as well one second um When you pay your credit card bills on cred, you earn cred coins. Use them to claim cash back and rewards. I know this sounds ridiculous, 
It's like saying Rahul Dravid has anger issues. Hey! That doesn't mean you can overtake. Come, man. Come. You come, man. What about Bhutani? Hey! Could have gone straight and taken. <laughs> So why is this super relevant and why do I call this pop culture, right? One is because uh, you're doing something that no one has ever seen before, which is uh, getting Rahul Dravid to have anger issues. But why was this pop culture? Because it was during the IPL, because it was cricket, because it was using Rahul Dravid. But more important, what is it that we do, which is what we call influencer marketing, right? We got Virat Kohli, who was playing the opening match of the IPL in April, right? Which was uh, Mumbai Indians versus RCB. To launch this ad on Twitter, saying never seen this side of Rahul Bhai, right? So it was not Cred that launched the ad; it was Virat Kohli that launched the ad in a very, very organic fashion, right? It was just it it almost seemed like he was just putting up a regular video of Rahul Dravid because it's not tagging um Cred as a brand, it's not tagging anybody else, it's not mentioning any hashtags, it's nothing. It's just like as if he's sharing a video, right? So the more organic and authentic you keep it, the better. Right, so we got Virat Kohli to do this, which is what, and then because Rahul Dravid said Indra Nagar ka munda hume, that suddenly just became a meme, right? So everybody was talking about it. Jani is raging, butter is coming. Uh, when you are hungry, you need Snickers, right? Uh, there were different cricket teams, there were different brands that jumped on the bandwagon. So we had if cricket is a gentleman game, then Rahul Dravid is that gentleman. And of course, Indra Nagar ka munda hume. So everybody sort of created a meme out of this, right? So is this influencer marketing? Yes, this is influencer marketing because we got some influential people in the industry. Influence, influential could be celebrities like Virat Kohli. Influential could just be uh, uh, twilebs, which is Twitter celebrities. So you had twilebs doing this. Um, it could also just be a lot of, um, say, uh, a lot of other cricketers in the under-19 team to reshare this ad, right? So it's distribution, or it is influencing opinions of people about what they thought about this ad, right? Um, what is influencer marketing? It's also movie and title marketing, right? So today's day and age, because we are all stuck at home, and there are so many movie releases, we have so many OTT platforms that are coming up. So Netflix, as we have mentioned, is one of our clients, right? So when we had uh, this movie called AK versus AK, which was released on Netflix, how did we sort of convert that into influencer marketing? So I'm just gonna quickly show you an example of that as well. One second. Everyone likes a good fight, but they love a dirty one. AK vs. AK. This revenge thriller where the lead actors played themselves, bent genres, broke molds and destroyed the lines between real and real. So what did we do to create a marketing strategy that would be equally edgy, twisted and as wacky as the film was? We turned their on-screen rivalry into a real-world war. Drawing from the real-life personalities of Anurag Kashyap and Anil Kapoor, we built a feud within the campaign, sparking it with a harmless tweet, igniting a flame with the first punch, the second hook, until we eventually showered the internet with the fire of the feud. We pushed the Twitterati and celebrity camps to take sides or just get out their popcorn and add to the chaos. Then we released not one, but three trailers, the two additional from each AK's biased point of view, tripling the effect of the feud until things started to go from real to really personal. The two AKs trashed off their way into each other's houses and then we pulled out the big guns with Jackie Shroff backing his favorite Lakhan and AIB spilling a diss track with Anurag Kashyap. But the final bombs were dropped when we took the fight to the streets, the airports, in flights, at malls, eventually catching all eyeballs and headlines, leaving the audience and the media asking themselves, is this fight really real or has film marketing in Bollywood now changed forever? we let you decide that one. Yes. 
so like you saw that was a very very fresh take to what influencer marketing is using two key opinion leaders which was anurag kashyap and anil kapoor and giving a com- and using their off screen personalities to actually build hype around uh, or build a very interesting um, influencer and video based uh, marketing campaign right so and of course these were all the individual assets that we spoke about so we had a rap battle we made them switch houses and we made anil kapoor review anurag kashyap's house we made anurag kashyap in review a uh, review anil kapoor post house uh then like we said we got Jackie Shroff to do something with Anil Kapoor we got AIB to do something with Anurag Kashyap so it was a full fledged i think it was a month campaign last year so this is also influencer marketing right when you see it you wouldn't think of it but it's the new generation type of marketing uh some more interesting things that we've done so i think very recently two days back if most of you uh saw the newspapers or the leading newspapers in the country so there was an ad which looked like a tuition ad right and that was actually an ad for goda plan free which was the newest uh, sort of launch on netflix and we played right so it just made it look like the typical classes that you see where they show the people who ranked and they show the percentages so using pop culture using something that iit students or people who give these entrance exams or people from that generation will relate to and sort of marrying it to your film or marrying it to what you're currently doing is again influencer marketing um bad explaining so this is one of the most interesting properties that we created so let me give you uh, a little bit of context right so netflix came to us around 3 years back and they said that guys we don't have enough women following our youtube page so what is it that we can do to get women onto our platform so what we did is we created a property called behens planning behens planning is nothing but behens explaining things which is a movie review show but from a female perspective right so how women would review the most popular tv shows as well as the movies that were there on netflix and we used kusha and shishti who are two of the most iconic uh, digital influencers in today's day and age to do this right and when we started off we would just review uh, movies with them but as we went along it's been well in the eighth season now and we've been creating 10 sort of videos every season we've got different influencers to join the bandwagon and we like to call it the behemoths and we've got lots of behemoths to join us so again just let me show you a quick summary of behemoths in this one second so you guys know exactly what we do here yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to Behens Play. Behens Play. Behens Play. A show where the hosts keep changing but the jokes just don't. मैं 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 और मैं हूं 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 और मैं हूं
and when they saw how CID solved this case, then they wanted to go and see the movie because they wanted to know what the actual case was all about, right? So uh, a lot of people think that influence marketing is just people who have large following on social media or people who have, you know, a large following just in general who are celebrities. But it's not always that, right? Half the people from CID don't even probably have social presence, like Shivaji Sadam, who's the key um, uh, person in CID, right? He didn't even know how to probably put an Instagram story up. He doesn't even have an Instagram page. I mean, he does, but with barely any followers. But that doesn't stop him from being an influencer. He still influences culture, and therefore, uh, he still is influencer marketing. Another example is uh, this uh, movie, uh, South movie, uh, on Netflix recently, which is called uh, Jaga Me Thandina, right? And one of the things that we do is that we get um, influencer uh, or celebrity beauty stylists to sort of recreate the look from iconic characters from the movie. So let me just show you an example. <laughs> So again, an interesting way to use beauty influencers to recreate looks, iconic looks from movies. So we have this entire series called Get the Look. So if you ever go on uh, Netflix's Instagram and you you type when you're right, you have a little hashtag get the look, you will see uh, all the recreations. So we've done like Nena from Yejavani Adivani, and we've done like, I mean, most of the most iconic movies, we've got a uh, lot of beauty influencers or fashion influencers to recreate those looks, right? Because what is this doing? This is just getting audience on the Netflix's page, this is influencing today's youth, this is getting youth to engage with the content on the page, this is also influencing them to start watching the newer content that is there. So this is all of this is influencer marketing. Let me show you some more examples. Um, also, of course, some of these are really popular things that are happening today in today's age as well, which is when there's a new movie release, right? Today, any new song that is released, what happens? They get a bunch of influencers, choreographers to sort of dance or do the choreography with them, right? To make their song more popular. How did Justin Bieber's stay become relevant? Because it was used in a reel. Right? How did Bachpan Ka Pyaar become relevant? Because suddenly Bacha used this song of a kid and it was all over the internet and everybody was creating nostalgia when he was using it, right? So just an example over sorry, just an example over here of uh, when um Shitmashati Chiraki Dil Mera I think re-released. And then they called it the Chiraki Dil Mera Challenge, which is what most films to do. They create a challenge. It happened during Gunguru. Back then, it, it's been happening for the last two, three years for most movie releases. Right? <laughs> Yes, so more importantly, I want you guys to see the caption, which is, so get how you make the song really popular, you make the most popular choreographers in the country, sort of choreograph it, dance on it, um, and you also then put out a Churake Del Mira challenge, where you ask people to copy the steps, send in their entries, they could win gratification, and it just sort of, you know, gets more and more people engaged with the song. Um, yeah, so this is another example of what's happening in today's day and age. Um, another very, very relevant example, right? So, uh, again, Priyank mentioned this in his introduction, which was Seema and D, right? So most most of you people on this call, I'm assuming, have at least heard about Seema Thaparya. She became super, super popular during the show Indian Matchmaking on Netflix, right? So what was her character? She was this stereotypical Indian matchmaker who said that, you know, this kind of a boy needs this kind of a girl or these are the kind of traits in the ideal girl that you need. So what we did actually with her is really interesting. We got her on Valentine's Day, which was around two to three months after um, the movie, sorry, after the show was launched. And we said, okay, let us get her to get people to date our burger. 
right? Which is for Burger King. And let me just show you exactly. Uh, let me just show you this example so you understand again pop culture, right? Using Seema Tapari. And honestly, guys, if we had done this, if we had done this video today, nobody would care because now Seema Tapari is not relevant, right? But at that point in time, everybody was talking about her. If you didn't know who she was, you would have a feeling of FOMO, right? Like, who is she? What is the show? Everybody must have seen at least one episode, or everybody must have, you know, at least gone and viewed her profile to know she is over here, right? So, using her. To a brand's advantage as an influencer is again influencer marketing. Okay. Hello, friends. I'm Seema Taparia from Mumbai. I'm a matchmaker. This Valentine's Day, my sincere request to all of you is break up. Karo. How long will you be in this dry relationship? And how long will you compromise on size? No size, no swag, very simple. Ultimately, my efforts are meaningless if you keep settling for less. You must find someone who fits your criteria. Relationship may flame on each other. It's very important. You want spice, taste, excitement, this, that, then why adjust? This is Valentine's Day. ये सूखे छोटे बोरिंग बगर से ब्रेकअप कर लो एंड डेट द बिगर जूसियर क्रंचियर फ्लेम विद कॉपर नाउ यू आर फ्रॉज ऑल राइट Yeah, so using Seema Aunty's most iconic lines, "Your stars are the right, your stars are aligned." Break up, kar lo. Why settle? Why settle for less? So using the context of everything that she used in the movie, but for a brand, right? And this influenced the audience. This made the brand sound quirky, relevant, fun. This was completely up Burger King's alley. For those of you who follow the brand, Burger King always does this kind of you know funny yet. out of the box kind of content okay moving back to the presentation um something for the boys i think i've done lots of girly things and dance challenges but uh, very recently so we had the ipl coming up right and there's this brand called homelane and uh, homelane has uh, dhoni as his brand ambassador right the dhoni is the brand ambassador of the film so what they did is th- the tvc itself is a pop culture in a way right so i'm just going to show you an example One second. Okay, so what they did is that so all the boys and all the I mean I don't want to say only boys, all the boys and girls that are cricket and IPL and Dhoni fans. So there is a whole trend which is called Dhoni memes, and and there's a lot of banter that happens between Dhoni and Ravindra Jadeja as well. A lot they make fun of each other. They have like major memes that they do, uh, you know, against each other just to sort of you know build some banter. so this brand home lane actually decided to ride on that trend and what they did is that their pvcs are memes in themselves so they just used a random footage of dhoni and then they used characters and they dubbed the entire video so that just to make it interesting and just to sort of you know memeify it in context for their brand right so i'm just going to play this example when you do home interiors no problems come from all sides right side left side front side back side so you let home land do your home Achha. interiors bro 45 days they'll finish or your rent is their problem come on taka tak chaka chak homeland.com i'll give you one more quick example ra bhai mauj kar di naya ghar le liya apne thank you dhoni bhai red duck ki interior home land se karwaiyo bhai ji goli de main sab रब बाकी वाले टी ट्वेंटी बोर्ड के टेस्ट बना देते हैं और यो पैंतालीस दिन में चाबी थारे हाथ में इंटीरियर कंप्लीट मतलब थारे जैसा फिनिशर और नहीं तो के So what are they really doing, right? They're just using a popular trend where people are dubbing cricket clips, right? And they've converted that to their PVC ad. So how did we take that to the next level? Let me just show you an example. One second. so we got um so whenever any new tvc is launched in today's day and age one of the mandates almost all brands are doing it is that they get influencers today to interact with their film in order to amplify it right so i'm just going to give you the example of the same home lane film that we saw and how we used influencers to build pop culture because they used weddings as a context because everybody is missing attending weddings and dancing at weddings so what did they do with this right so one second रात वहां से आ रही है तो इस साइड से प्लेट उठा के मुझे इधर मिल टिक्की वाले पे वहां से हम चीला उठाएंगे और उस साइड मेन कोर्स है फिर प्लेट उठा के भरवा बैंगन भरेंगे पापड़ ले लेना और वहां पे मिलना ओके बॉयज प्लेट रियली वेल बारात वहां
so it's using the same context of the film right so you're using a dub you're adding the wedding context to it and then you're using rj abhina who is one of the most popular influencers to build some camaraderie with uh, dhoni right so again amplification the people the minute people see this what's their instant feeling they feel that okay i want to go and watch this ad what was the original ad what is it that they were talking about and it just builds a little curiosity the same thing is what we did with cred as well right so cred had this whole series of ads last time so we got influencers to interact with it so that the film could be amplified i'm going to show you an example kya baat hai teen din se na to sarla ne good morning wish kiya whatsapp pe aur na hi kadi patta mangne aayi kuch to gadbad hai jaake pata lagati hu maine to pehle hi kaha tha sarla ka affair chal raha hai pakdi gayi bhai sahab ko to kuch samajh nahi aa raha ye ladka to bilkul ko maar sanu jaisa lagta hai ha abhi dekho kaise chup khadi hai waise iski zubaan nahi band hoti उटेंटिक um yes and then so there are a couple of more examples so yashraj mukhate i'm sure everybody in this room has heard of him uh, he remixes the most popular tracks so whether it's paadi ho rahi hai or um sada kurta tommy or whether it is rasode mein so again that is influencer marketing yashraj mukhate today is an influencer why what does he do he gets his audiences he's he's almost somebody that can influence his audience to find out what is trending right so if you want someone to know something about your brand if you want to make your brand cool and relevant if you want to influence the mind of the audience saying that hey if you don't know about this you're not cool enough then you should use yashraj right but there are of course and then the example on the left is ruhi dosani again very very popular dance influencer and she does like her style and her niche is sort of doing dance videos so she did this very popular video on bacha masala but my recent favorite and since it's pop culture and relevance let me talk about something we did a week ago which is the recent cred ad with neeraj chopra right so i'm sure all you guys have seen it so when this ad came out it was your pressure because we had to outdo what we did for rahul dravid right we got virat kohli then so what did we do here i think here we used the root of uh using a lot more fun and music right and also neera chopra is extremely um he is more massier right like and it's not cricket which is you know it's like everybody knows who he is and everybody knows what he does so we built a few fun ads should i actually i'm not going to play the ad i think i'm just going to straight away jump into some of the fun ways that we amplify the cred ad uh, using influencer marketing 97 neeraj neeraj jobra come on neeraj you can do it take the way put your back into it tell us why show us how look at where you came from look at you now tell us the reality come in tell us the sense of me tell us the dirt come in tell us the power so why is this influencer marketing or why would you call this influencer marketing because so people who watch the ipl anyway know about cred right they've seen the ad whether on hotstar whether on television how do you get the non ipl watching audience to still watch the ad so you go after people who are influential or who influence other people within your audience so other categories whether it's youngsters whether it's women whether it's say older people or whether you go after certain cities so for example we say okay you want to go after maharashtra it's a very big region so we use someone like a deepraj jadhav again and we got him to remix the ad is one more version i'm just going to show you neeraj hua madhyam see for cash bet see for chutia 360 degree marketing kitne ka hai 150 rupya dega वाह क्या एक्टिंग कर रहा है वैसे गोल्ड का भाव काफी बढ़ गया वाह क्या एक्टिंग कर रहा है नाउ दैट गेट्स मी एज एक्साइटेड एज इंडियंस अराउंड नीरज चोपड़ा मेरी आंखों में मेरी सांसों में मेरी धड़कन में मेरी मेरी बाहों में आई कैन सी अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल लाफिंग ऑन द कॉल 
makes me very happy. <laughs> so yes, it, it makes me just feel like yes, we're doing something right. But uh, yes, yeah, so this is what it is, right? Would you guys have probably seen the ad? No, but is it possible that this video becomes a lot more viral on the internet because of just the context? And then your mom has probably, or your brother, or somebody in your house has seen this video, and then they're like, "What are they talking about? And what is this new cred ad?" Right? So it is just influencer marketing is buzz marketing it is just building buzz around the content that you're doing which is why pollen and the bees and the buzz but sure no, i'm kidding so earlier uh influencers were a part of media right which meant that there were a lot of other ads and performance ads and banners and google search and this and that influencers were a, were a very small part of it today i would like to say that influencers have sort of become the center of anything and everything that we do lockdown was a big blessing for all of us because today all brands are going influencer first influencers are being used for orm orm is basically our response management right so if something is happening on a particular brand you get influencers to respond in the comments to kind of manage the sentiment around that particular ad uh, influencers are being used for live event coverages right so some new product is being launched some new store is being opened you're getting influencers to go there and talk about that it's being used to create video assets so a lot of the new brands that you see are using influencers as the lead characters in those ads whether it's barkha singh whether it's someone like a khali whether it's an ayush mehra whether it is kusha kapila being on the mintra superstar whether it's dolly singh being a uh, cast in a netflix ad prajakta kohli doing mismatched right so they're almost becoming the face today like influencers are now becoming mainstream kota factory becoming mainstream again right um so let me get since we are in college let me go down to a little bit of gyan right so this is where you kind of if you really need to make the notes so there are two types of content strategies that brands do when they are doing influencer marketing right one is a functional route and one is an emotional route so a functional route is when they straight out tell the influencer go and talk about the features or the benefits of my brand hey this is my makeup this is the shade this is how you apply it this is it's got this ingredient that ingredient it's got 99% this 50% that and it's great for your skin right very very functional so rp on the call will probably buy it because she's like okay it has it ticks all the right boxes it has it matches my skin tone it the price matches my price point it's probably you know whatever great for my skin type like i said so it's it's very functional and talks straight to the point right or it is a brand which tells you how to use makeup right so and these are the kind of videos that you will see with in, with influencers in that me but these are the kind of videos that you will see on e-commerce platforms right so so very functional in terms of content they'll tell you this is the shade go and use this shade go and this is how you apply it three drops only once in the morning once in the night right but the second route that a lot of brands take is when they connect to their audience at an emotional level right so they're not selling their product they're not even selling their product benefits what they're selling to you is the emotional message so a lot of people today relate to dove at an emotional level right because they're like oh dove stands for real beauty and that's what you remember more than what the features of the product are or the very of dove so far right so similarly the maybelline campaign that i showed you we did a functional aspect of it which is the e-commerce videos that i showed you using influencers but we also did an emotional aspect right so where we played on the emotion um so the brand tagline was fit me it was their new foundation and the whole point was like you know why should you have only four shades of foundation indian skin is in so many colors so we now have a range of 30 shades right so don't fit in we have a shade for you right and the entire campaign name that or the communication that we devised was fit me as i am right so you fit me i'm not going to fit in and so we used people who sort of broke the stereotype in their industry um so they did not fit in but they did something different right so they said they they were like out there so just want to show you guys i knew this was the only city that i would meet fellow freaks like me crazy like me and very queer like me I was crazy even as a child. I was never good at studies. In fact, in my 10th standard board exams, 
and managed to secure only 48%. It was quite shameful. But my father wasn't even shocked. He said he was not surprised because I was never an academic. But if I came home from a singing competition with anything less than a gold, then there would be troubles. When I finally moved to Bombay, it was because I came out of the closet and I chose to leave home and move to Bombay. The funny thing is I was never even trained in uh, makeup or hair. I'd never been certified, I'd never done a... Yeah, so it's a really long video, right? But what I, the point I'm trying to establish is that today somebody will buy Maybelline because of the functional benefit, but somebody else will buy Maybelline because of the emotional. They emotionally relate to the brand. They say, hey, this is a brand that stands for what I stand for. They don't believe in stereotypes. They're embracing, you know, inclusivity or they're embracing, uh, you know, men using makeup. So, and, you know, I, I want to, you know, I trust this brand, right? So you have to, as a brand, use the content strategy and dis decide what content strategy you want to go after right the second thing is what are the campaign objectives so every time we have influencer marketing there are four key campaign objectives that usually most brands follow right so they either want endorsement so they want somebody to be the face of their brand they either want awareness which means that they want maximum people to just hear about their brand or they just want to you know they're having a new product launch or they're pay, maybe announcing a new variant or they just have a new ad like cred right so they want everybody to talk about it some of them want engagement so they want people to interact with them right so they want you to say like like my video share my video comment on my video participate in the challenge so they just want people to sort of talk about their brand or then it's advocacy influencers who build advocacy are usually experts in their industry who do testimonial videos, product reviews, who sort of, you know, uh, my skincare routine, my makeup routine. So long advocacy based videos. So all this sounds very, very heavy. Let me just show you again some examples. Because I think every time I play a video, everyone just goes like, like at their screen. They're not interested in looking at me. So let me go back to the video and show you exactly what that is. So Maniaval, uh, which is a very famous a male fashion brand, right? So even Maniaval today, when they launch their kurtas, what they came to me and said is, you know what, hey guys, we want people to think that our kurtas are cool. We want people to think that they're fashionable. We want to be a part of the trending reels on Instagram so that everybody creates reels when they wear our Indian clothes as well. So this is just an example of the video we created. So baby, I'm modern Ranja. Gaddiyan bhi mere kol panja. Main ajdaa ya modern Ranja. Gaddiyan bhi mere kol panja. actually post so like what are the five poses you have to take when you're at a wedding we also got one which was that there is a outfit at maniaval for every festival right so we did like a trending reel as well there are lots of examples i'm just looking at the time so i'm gonna go a little quickly okay another great example which is for cred right uh, sorry for uh, kellogg's which is again ipl happened last year uh, nobody could be in the stadium because it was locked down how do you marry creative influencers and tech again something very unique to what we do at poland right so filters are really popular most of the generation today that consumes the ipl is also watching filters so we said okay people can't go to the stadium to watch the matches how can we bring the stadium home right so again using influencers and technology to build buzz for a brand so let me show you an example <laughs> Pringles 
Rose India. Wave it with me. How? One more time. So send your love long way. For one more. Time. So what this basically did, guys, is that it made the brand stand out in the clutter of all the IPL ads, right? Because it had tech, people were interacting with the filter, and the Pringles basically created a wave. So it was the Mexican wave that happens in the stadium normally. Also, the shape of the Pringles has a very distinct wave in it; like it's not a regular chip, right? It has that shape, so it went very well with the brand positioning as well, and it got everybody to sort of send in messages for their teams, right? So like everybody was cheering for their favorite IPL team. So clutter breaking, cost effective, using technology, and super super scalable, right? Like we had so many. I think like millions of people just like using this filter and sort of sending in their entries, right? So it's a very simple idea, but like I said, very very scalable and influential um, at that point in time. Um, some brands have actually also used influencer marketing for from a little bit more serious perspective, right? It's not all fun and games, and we don't just do funny stuff. But um, so brand like Maggie, right? Very very monumental in the country. What they did last year is they realized that everybody was entering the kitchen, right? So they created something called "Dish Ke Liye Do Minute" because two minutes is Maggie's proposition, right? And they called out something called as "Apna Food Business." So they were like, "Hey, if you want to start two things, either you want to start your own food business from home or you want to become a food blogger, Maggie is the page for you. So send us your entries." Tell us why you should be the next. You know why you want to start your own business, and we will train you and we will help you become the next food blogger. So they created a microsite. They had some of the most popular chefs and food bloggers on it, and then they said sign up. Right. So the minute you sign up, and then we'll choose some lucky entries, and you get a chance to get trained by these people. Now this is taking influencer marketing into a completely new space. One is because you're influencing. every single person in the indian household today who's cooking but more importantly you're creating first party data for a brand through influencer marketing right because now the brand has the data of everybody that has signed up to become a food chef everybody that has signed up to become a food blogger so tomorrow maggie very easily can target all these people with their products right so it's a two fold sort of a objective that they did serve with this campaign again a very unique example of influencer marketing uh, another uh, sort of thing which a lot of brands do is they do a lot of you know using the most popular formats on the platforms that exist so doing like an ama which is an ask me anything right so the so cred for example every friday we do an ama with them where we bring experts onto their page to answer question in different genres so hair stylist makeup artist finance expert expert wedding designer um this is a celebrity fashion stylist i think aasha sharma so every friday if you follow cred page so today brands uh, sorry today people audiences want to in, want to interact with brands brands themselves are influencers today right you follow some brands cuz they're cool you follow some brands cuz they're informative cuz they're educational so uh different different uh, i think everybody in their own way is sort of paying attention to brands right uh paying attention to influencers sorry okay last part from a theory point of view which is so we discussed content strategy right functional versus in, emotional we discussed campaign objectives are you doing awareness are you doing engagement are you doing advocacy uh and then here this is distribution strategy right what does it mean is it owned media or is it earned media and very simply the difference between owned and earned owned is what runs on the brand handle so the brand owns that piece of content which means it's a branded tvc or a branded video so the cred ad is an owned 
asset but everything that we created with your deep raj jadhav or with virat kohli posting it or with say uh, mayur uh, mayur or ruhi or yashraj that's all earned you're earning all this media around your content right so you have a distribution strategy where you say hey i just want to create one asset and then i want to push all my money behind it from the brand handle or you say no i want an earned media strategy where i want the assets to be created by influencers and posted on the influencer handles as well yeah the difference between the two is that uh, the power of influencer marketing really comes out when you use the earned strategy because you can create a lot of content over there that you can't create on a branded handle and i'll give you one very simple example which is say review videos right can a brand like lakme hypothetically say hey lakme is better than maybelline because of five reasons they can't right but can an influencer turn around and say hey i tried lakme and i tried maybelline and i think lakme is better than maybelline right so using influencers using the strength of influencers is why a lot of brands get away with doing the kind of content pegs that they can right for example some brand like uh, say maybelline it has international mandates or unique look for that matter which is a brand of ours that they cannot just say anything they cannot put up any design they can't do a lot of things because it's an international brand they have to follow guidelines so how do you sort of adapt it to the indian market how to use unique lot to style for the indian winter is something you do on the influencer page you cannot do it on a branded handle how do you uh, what are the five top picks under 999 in a particular fashion brand right a brand is not going to say that a brand can't curate a list of their own and turn around and say hey choose these five brands mintra today cannot say must buy on mintra they can't right because they have so many brands and they have to keep everybody happy but influencers can say hey these are my top 5 picks from the nike sale these are my top 5 picks from the mintra sale right so using them is is very 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 important right and very recently of course i think most of you must have heard but there are these new ascii guidelines that have come in which are basically that influencers have to disclose uh when they are doing a paid partnership right which has sort of made this a little harder but it's also made it better right because today the audiences know when an influencer is talking about a brand when they are being paid for it versus when they're talking about a brand when they genuinely feel a certain review about it yeah and i'm going to quickly give you an example of owned versus earned so like i said lays owned asset is say their anvir kapoor uh video on which they're running on tv or they're running on ott platforms how did they have fun with it on an earned platform which is something they cannot do so then we kapoor becomes their brand ambassador and they have certain assets with him how do they use influencers to build content in the internet over and above what they're anyway doing on their brand handle now what was their proposition in this case this proposition was buy lays and get a certain amount of money on paytm right so let me just show you the earned media that they did with this and again pop culture cricket using cricketers and using sehwag who has this show called viru ki baithak that he does during the ipl so let me just show you the example baba hum to sirf opening karte hain aap to khol ke rakh dete the kaise baba kaise beta shekhar aise mat bekar lays khol 2gb data free mil raha hai online ja mere batting ke lesson aur baba ke session dono dekh le thank you baba well i so it's interesting funny contextual ways of building the same proposition right so sehwag is doing it in his own authentic style he's saying ke buy lays get the 20 get 20 gb data watch my videos and you know know the answer to your question as well right so this is um, an example of earned media as well and there are of course multiple examples of uh, you know review videos i'm sure everybody has you know every every time they buy a new iphone so iphone versus samsung iphone 12 versus iphone 13 unboxing of the new one plus that's all influencer marketing right that's all review videos which are earned pieces of content that brands do every time they launch a new product okay last part which is what are the types of influencers everybody on this call is an influencer i am an influencer you are an influencer Aditi is an influencer for that matter. She's influencing all of you about this session. But what are the traditional types of influencers? And this example I love because this for me is the best example. The OG influencer, which is the Amul girl, right? Why is she the OG influencer? Because 
she is almost your source of information the minute you see an amul ad you know what's the latest trending in the country right so she was always iconic for pop culture but at the same time it is very very authentic to herself so it's still always in the amul tonality at the same time still in a way always a subtle dig at the brand it's something to do with amul and butter and maska and you know uh, you know so it's always got that undertone of the brand message but no one in the ad does it tell you hey go buy the product right it's just cool it's funny it's relevant it's trending it is also uh, very very you know moment marketing based right it, it, it just keeps changing and it's i like the amul girl i relate to the amul girl because she's funny uh, i wanted to follow the amul girl and the amul girl today has the power to influence me right so amul girl for me is the og influencer but of course the theoretical question that everybody asks what is the type of influencer there are four types of influencers ideally there are celebrities macro micro nano um there is no textbook definition of what these followers are it's just what i think every agency creates when they're creating a plan that according to us nano influencers have this following micro has this macro has this celebrity has this right but there is honestly no real definition right but celebrities for us are people who have an online as well as an offline presence so someone today like a um Stephanie Khan I would say is not very active on digital but everybody knows Stephanie Khan right or Nawaz Din Siddiqui doesn't have a very big social media following but he's a celebrity because offline everybody knows of him and Ujjwal Chawdhary for example right but a digital celebrity is who we put in the macro category like a Kushal Kapil or a Dolly Singh or a um you know like we showed you RJ Abina for example they're born on the digital media and if you are not on any of the social platforms then you don't even know who they are right so a lot of our parents grandparents may not know who they are so they're digital first celebrities and the third category is people who are known in their niche who is the top finance influencer who is the top travel influencer who is the top uh, crypto influencer who is the top gaming influencer so because the category in itself is not that big therefore their followers aren't that big but they still top of their category or they are top of their market which means the top influencer in telangana the top influencer in west bengal the top influencer in uh, karnataka right so that's what we categorize as micro so top of their region or top of their niche and uh, nano is just upcoming anybody and everybody today that is trying to build a social media following for themselves but um I, I think I need like five minutes more just from a time check point of view. But like I said, everybody today is an influencer. So the first video, so Aishwarya Mohan Raj, dad is an influencer. Viraj Gilani is nani is an influencer. Deepika Padukone is an influencer. Alia Bhatt showing her skincare routine is an influencer. Uh, Khali in the next KFC ad is an influencer. And uh, this brand called Fin Cocktail who put up finance content, they are Fin Flo Fin influencers. But yeah, so they're finance influencers, right? So everybody today, guys, is an influencer. The most latest in the lockdown, medical experts are influencers because they're influencing your opinion on the COVID vaccine, right? So Adil Punawala is an influencer because he's telling you why you should take COVID shield and not take COVAX, for example. Uh, even uh, for that matter, employees. Today are being used as influencers. I work for Amazon, and I think Amazon is great. Uh, it's a great place to work in the lockdown because we get all these benefits. We work only three times in the year. Uh, sorry, three times in the week. Uh, we can we have work from home. We get these benefits, and my COVID is covered for. So an employee even talking about their brand today is influencing the opinions of everybody else who want to work at that place, right? So an employee is an influencer as well. So everybody is an influencer. And last thing, uh, not very very um, important, but today the platforms that are available for influencer marketing are everywhere, right? So of course, television and offline is there, but from an online point of view, a lot of people think that influencer marketing or influencers are only present on Instagram or, for that matter, TikTok or Facebook or YouTube. But I'm going to show you some two last examples of how we've used unique platforms like LinkedIn. And Quora for influencer marketing as well, right? Which is something that people normally don't keep in the regular mix. So everybody knows about the share chat and the mod and the latest mod superstar challenge and TikTok dance challenge. So you assume that there are influencers on these platforms, right? But just gonna leave us on the last note of the. So this is what happened on LinkedIn for influencer marketing. So when Family Man 
as a movie was uh, as a show sorry was to be launched what did they do and because it was a cool you know the uh, the the young man not the young man sorry the man of today and you know what is his struggle for finding a job so they used key uh, owners or founders or leaders in the top country uh, in the top uh, organizations in the country to take his interview right so they started the job hunt for shrikant tiwari who was basically manoj bajpai so they said help our friend shrikant tiwari with job recommendation right and then they had oyo rooms founder ritesh agarwal interview him so this was an entire linkedin activity then they had danzo and kabir biswas so kabir biswas founder of danzo did an interview with him then they had ankur wari who everybody knows about as a motivational educational speaker to speak with him then they had the owner of jaumi talk to him right so they all everybody basically interviewed him and what he would have to do to get a job at their uh, to get a uh, yeah job at their companies right and this was something very very different never seen before and it got the linkedin audience excited about a show like family man right so not using the traditional influencers but using like i said founders of different companies to do this so very interesting example and the last example which i said is using quora right and this is something we did very recently so for those who aren't aware quora is basically like a platform which can like answer any questions so it's not exactly google but people go here it's like a reddit it's like a platform where you go and you ask It's like an FAQ answer, most asked questions. So we realized that Quora has a very large audience from the IT engineering sector. So for our latest launch, which is Quora Factory, we got Jitu Bhaiya, who is the key character, to answer the most asked engineering questions on Quora. So we used him as an influencer, and he's in his own style. He answered, which was O R M, like I said. So he answered and commented on the most asked questions on Quora about engineering. So how did you prepare for the IIT G? Right, and then he gave his answer. Or what are some of the engineering entrance exams I should apply for? Right, I'm in the twenty standard. Or what are the questions that are asked in BITSAT? So because he's a professor, he just answered these questions. But it was something different. It got noticed that okay, who's Jitu Bhai? I know this person suddenly answering questions on Quora. But that's where your audience is, right? That's where you are. So you're finding your right audience. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it from. What we need to do. Um, if you guys have enjoyed the session, guys, there's a lot more. I mean, I can't believe I had to finish this in 60 minutes. I think like one of the hardest things I had to do was show all the great work that we've been doing and all the great things that have been happening in the influencer marketing industry in one presentation. But uh, yes, any questions? Anybody has any thoughts? Anything at all that they like to ask me? Uh, Ma'am, how do you find effective uh, influencers for your brand? How do we find how do we find the right influencers for our brand? Yes. Um. So, like I said, uh, there is a, a process of so we have a lot of tools. So, Colin is very data centric. So, there are tools today which help you. find out and actually see the insights of a lot of influencers so for example if you want to see like hey i want an influencer whose audience is from um uh, maharashtra between the age of 18 to 24 Or you know whatever it may be, so you can actually get that data on tools today, and then you're like, okay, this person's not one is does the influencer match, uh, you know, the personality that I'm trying to depict. The second thing is does he actually cater to the audience that I'm trying to go after, right? So that's also another very important part of how we select influencers. Uh, we need to see whether they, um, you know, will be able to create the kind of content. So are they funny? Can they create the kind of content that we want? Um, sorry. Just Let me show you something actually to make your life a lot easier as well. So this is a tool, for example, that we use, right? And if I, for example, just hypothetically, because everybody knows Kusha, uh, pick up Kusha, and I uh, search for her profile, and then what I get to see very interestingly are her audience insights. Right, so I see. Okay, eighty-three percent of our audience is real people. A lot of people today buy followers, right? So they have almost twenty, thirty percent is real. Everything else is bots. I get to see what is her engagement rate, and suddenly I'm seeing that okay, in September the engagement rate has drastically increased. She's great for brands now. She's very relevant. 
I also look at her the age group of audience that follows her, right? So probably I see okay, thirty to thirty four is her largest audience. Then maybe she's like newly married, and that's her sort of um, the, the audience that she wants to go after. So I'm not going after. I'm going after a young audience. Kusha Kapila is not the person to go after. Does she have a large female audience? Yes, she does, right? Because you assume. So therefore, when is this relevant? It's relevant for a beauty brand. Because today, someone like an Ananya Pandey or an Alia Bhatt or a Disha Patani actually has eighty to ninety percent male following. Right, so they're not that relevant for a beauty brand because the majority of audience that follows them is men. Right, so this is the kind of uh, data that we look into. I'm not to answer your question when we're shortlisting um, influencers to see how they are most uh, relevant for the brand. I hope that answers your question. Yes, we are. Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. First of all, thank you so much for this amazing session. And uh, I feel really inspired looking at you. You know, like the girl power vibes. I really like that. So uh, I just wanted to ask you. So while marketing a film, does the film marketing team decide the ideas and the influencers that they're going to use, or is this the job of the influencer team, or is it like a collaboration? Okay. So um, it's ninety percent of the times it starts off with an open brief. So they say, "Hey, we have this new title coming out. So hypothetically, we have Brahmastra coming out. What can we do?" Right. So we go back to them with the content strategy and we tell them who are the influencers that they work with. Once we give them ideas, then they sort of help us shortlist. So they don't always start, but they kind of then help us streamline and shortlist. Unless they say that, hey, you know what, the master has Alia, and we have got Ranveer Kapoor, and you know we can use him as well. So if they have something like that, or like a director's bite or a producer that we can use, sure. But usually the agency is the one that comes up with the ideas and the influencer suggestions for any brand, not just movie marketing. And then the brand team shortlists what they think fit best from a budget point of view, as well as a uh, you know brand fit point of view. Thank you. We do all the hard work. <laughs> okay. Yes. Anybody else? Any more questions? Yes, Aban. How can I help you? Yeah, man. I wanted to ask that the brand tell you to choose the uh, means the brand give you the list of influencers, or you choose your uh, influencers that to market the brand. I really wish brands did a lot more work and they made the influencer list for me, but no, we have to do it. Uh, so brands just tell me that they come to me with a problem. They say, okay, it is Ganpati, so I want to make noise in Maharashtra in regions like Mumbai, Pune, um, say I don't even know uh, Nasik, right? And so find me influencers from this region who have X amount of following and who are relevant on Instagram or who are present on YouTube. So the brand just gives us the brief, right? And then we need to share the list of influencers with them. We have to do our homework. We have to do our research, and then they will um, select from the list that we recommend. Brand is the boss. हम से काम कराते हैं सब. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Nakshatra. Um, Ma'am, um, what type of approach when it comes to influencer marketing creates better engagement? For example, when you said they are that fully launched the threat ad, and uh, the Javelin one was uh, when you guys thought of music influencers to launch that. So, what kind of uh, of these approaches create better engagement? The tweets or the videos, or it just depends on the brand. Yes. So, uh, like you said, there is no fixed formula in general for influencer marketing in terms of what works. It's usually a time-relevant thing. So, I'll give you an example. Like uh, in Cred, for Cred as a brand, Twitter is always the best way to go. Now, there are two reasons. Like I explained in the beginning of the presentation, data shows that Twitter works best for Cred's audience. It's an educated audience. They're into finance. They watch the IPL, IPL live, tweeting, commenting. Large part of their audience is on Twitter, right? So one reason is data shows that their audience is on that platform. The second thing is that we realize that cricket, right? So because Cred has a big during the IPLs, you need to pick someone that has a cricket audience or that has a cricket 
during cricket following and so therefore um, and if you notice during cricket all the means all the threads all the oh this one got out and this shouldn't have happened all that conversation that banter is happening on twitter right therefore twitter becomes the most relevant platform for someone like her and in neera chopra ke so the rahul dravid ad for example didn't have didn't have a jingle to it it wasn't a yawn right it just had the indra nagar ka ghunda as a hook and we realized that it is memeable and means are present on twitter so therefore we went on twitter but for the javelin ad we realized it's song right like the song is what you're going to remember of course you're going to watch neera chopra but music is the usp of instagram because people are using music on reels people are using music in their videos twitter doesn't have a very strong music uh, sort of resemblance of music in their any of their formats so therefore therefore we chose um, instagram so there is no real Uh, right or wrong way to do it. You have to customize your options for every new brief that sort of comes in to see what works. Or you just have to do things a couple of times, and then by then you know what works best, uh, what works best for that brand and its audience. So there's no fixed thing that works for any two brands. Yes, Hari Har and Karan Hari Har, you can go first. uh good afternoon ma'am uh thank you for the insights and everything uh so it was pretty good uh so my question is uh like the cred thing so how did this idea or you can say the pitch came uh, of hitting nostalgia uh the first time when i saw this uh, govinda uh, not exactly govinda but i guess uh, first was uh, anil kapoor yeah, govinda bappi lehri anil kapoor yeah Yes, yes, yes. So, how did this idea pitch, or it was the cred or the agency, and how exactly uh, you targeted the '90s, or you can say those uh, parents' generation heroes and uh, artists? So, how did it uh, start or come? Oh, okay. So, uh, now, um, why did you say it was pretty good? Because it was very good. But uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, what I was saying, I mean, so the ad itself was not made by us. The ad was made by another agency, right? Which is called uh, by which is headed by somebody called Ayappa, and in the entire time my blood flow, right? So they came up with the creative for the cred ad itself, right? And um, the reason I guess they used these people is because they wanted to be collaborating, right? So they wanted to use somebody that is not already overused and abused, using a Virat Kohli, all brands use him, uh, Dhoni, all brands use him, right? So cred strategy has always been they were the first brand to do an ad with Neera Chopra. Right, so even though he came back after Olympics and there was a lot of noise around him, they've decided to use him because before any other uses him, right? Rahul Dravid was never seen in this light. So uh, the creative idea of the ads for Cred was actually inspired by their brand proposition. Their brand proposition says that Cred rewards are as surprising as, or Cred rewards are as ridiculous as, or Cred rewards are as delightful as. And then they try to create these parodies, right? Like uh, uh, Jackie Shroff doing Sumba and uh, Rahul Dravid getting angry and stuff like that. Our role in that area was to see, okay, once the ad is made, how do we make sure that maximum people on social platforms see that ad, right? Mm-hmm. So that was the role that we played in terms of distributing that content, not creating that content. And I think why did they use nostalgia? Because there was a phase in, and this is just my understanding, uh, during the lockdown where there were so many throwbacks. Right, Viva as a brand did a throwback. Lucky Ali suddenly came out of nowhere and everybody was like, "Oh wow, throwback!" So I think it was just that phase where everybody was at home spending time with family, and there was major nostalgia moments. So they kind of played on that emotion. Oh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Yes, Karan. Oh hi, good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you for a lovely session. And I just have a couple of questions. So, what are your uh, thoughts on the new ASCII guidelines? My thoughts. Yeah. So I think they're great. Um, I think that ASCII, um, the fact of okay, so for just to build context for the larger class, ASCII guidelines are guidelines that have been put into place, which is uh, for influencers. So, like you have seen, ASCII guidelines for food products. Uh, we have ASCII guidelines for influencer marketing, which means that every time a uh, influencer interacts with the brand, does a branded content, they have to make a disclosure, right? So they say hashtag paid partnership, hashtag collaboration, hashtag sponsorship, hashtag gifting, or whatever it may be, right? So my thoughts on it, I think it's great. 
right while the great a it brings influence the marketing to the forefront of digital marketing nobody took it seriously and then they realized that they look this is what all brands are doing everybody using influence marketing let's like it's brought the spotlight onto influence marketing which is great right that's the first thing the second thing why i think is great is because it helps the real content creators stand out from just people who are dependent on brand endorsement right so a lot of content creators today like say your kushal and dollies of the world create content irrespective of branded collaborations so there is enough organic content on their page that keeps their audience engaged and even if they don't do branded content for a month their page is still going to be active they're still going to get more followers the people are still going to love them and engage with them whereas there were people today who call themselves influencers who were just putting up one branded post after the other right but the minute the ask i ask the guidelines guidelines have come in they are not going to be able to put paid partnership on every video that or every post that they do forcing them to create a niche of their own or a content of their own or they not become influencers right so it sort of helps in like filtering out the real influencers from just everybody and the third thing that it does is it also sort of um, you know build authenticity karan because the audience is now i'm telling you that i'm getting paid money to say that this phone is great okay but i'm still telling you the features it's your choice whether you want to believe me or not so it is empowering the audience while giving them uh, the information that hey you can be paid to say this whether you listen to this information or not is up to you right so i think it's uh, it's great i think that is great yeah ma'am i have one more question uh, sure. so ma'am after say a particular campaign Uh, if it's over or uh, an influencer campaign is over so what would uh, be the matrix to measure the roi of it like how do you measure the roi for the particular influencer campaign sure so um basically today if a lot of you have seen that uh, on instagram especially you are allowed to make a paid partnership disclosure right um if you just give me a second i'm going to show you an example of what it looks like so you see it like Uh, one second. But basically, what you get to track so there are different metrics. Uh, Karan, to answer your question, um, some of them are just pure views, right? So brands evaluate it in the form of CPV, which is cost per view. I am paying this influencer one lakh rupees. This influencer is giving me one lakh views, so my cost per view is one rupee, right? So it's either measured in that metric. So then they evaluate and they say, okay, influencers are charging me one rupee as CPV. Just running an ad on Google is charging me eighty pesos CPV. Which of the two do I want to use? So views is one. Reach is another one. Reach is basically how many people can I deliver this ad to, and how many people can I reach out to? So if a particular influencer, say um, Ria is an influencer, like I said, and she has one million followers, the average uh, Instagram algorithm says that ten percent of your followers is your reach. So if I have one million followers, I have one lakh reach. Like my content is delivered to a minimum of one lakh people. so people say okay i am paying you 1 lakh rupees and i am getting a reach of 1 lakh out of this right so different um sort of brands or content pieces have different kinds of metrics uh it could be like i said views reach it could be engagement rate right so how many people are engaging with my content so cpe which is a cost per engagement uh and to be bid us bid goodbye to each other i would like to give you a thank you note ma'am if you allow me to How sweet! Thank you. Yes, it's not required. Okay. So, all right. So, this has been a very, very, very fruitful session, and we are all mesmerized. In all honesty, one of my personal favorites, and I'm sure we, you know, my batchmates can agree with me. I'm sure everyone has taken a lot uh, from the session, and we can use this when we walk towards the professional goals. Hopefully, ma'am, we can see you once again for another insightful session. and a big big thank you from me and my fellow batchmates and i hope ma'am you enjoyed interacting with us as much as we did with you again a big big thank you ma'am thank you so much yeah, it was an absolute pleasure thank you guys hope you guys learned something if you have any questions please write to us and i'll be happy to um, see you guys soon with some more interesting insights